So we look now at getting a level six in AF1 for writing. So the focus as ever at the moment is looking at imaginative, interesting and thoughtful texts. So what we want to do, first of all, is be able to write in a way that shows an imaginative treatment of appropriate material, familiarity with conventions of variety of forms and adapting them when needed to suit purpose and audience, not always successfully. So the last part is actually a good place to start with understanding this one, not always successfully. So even when you're doing this level six, the skill that you're going to show here, you're going to show flickers of it or show it to some extent, but you're not going to do it all the way through. So an imaginative treatment of appropriate material. So whatever you're actually writing about, you're writing about in an imaginative way. It's not just what we'd expect. So, for example, if I was asking you to write about a day in a shopping center, you wouldn't just list all the things that you bought. You know, you might pay extra attention to the people that were around you, the, the janitors that came through, um, some little kids they were running or a kid screaming in a pram. You'd have more imaginative elements in there. You'd have uh, familiarity with the conventions. Now, conventions is basically a word that it kind of sums up either either a agreed or unagreed rules so if we're writing a speech generally we'd expect to reference the audience in it you know say we you us yeah, it's kind of expected if we're writing a speech because we're speaking to people if uh, we're writing a letter then we presume that we'd have the convention of putting the address uh, the addresses sorry in the different of the different sides um, obviously a lot of that's changing now with with email etc uh, so whatever form of writing that you're actually taking on, so an article you'd expect to have a headline, etc. You, you've got those kind of conventions, also conventions as you're actually going going through. So an article will involve X and etc, etc as, as you're going through. Now you will adapt the conventions, um, adapting them when needed to suit the purpose or the audience. So depending on what you actually want to get across. So for example, your letter might include bullet points. Okay, that's it can be in there or we know why bullet points are used and you'll be able to stick that into your letter to actually get a point across rather than maybe, excuse me, listing things in long form. So here's an example we've put that put down here. An essay, you are expected, or the general things that would be expected to be in an essay, you'd have some quotes, quotations that should be, sorry, uh, maybe some statistics, trying to get across what you're saying, and some footnotes perhaps. You know, it doesn't have to include all of them, but they're general things that we expect to see in um, essays, etc. If you're trying to argue uh, something, and that's the general things we're, we're used to seeing. So you need to be able to put them in and start to do them but not always successfully so sometimes what you put in there will jar or might be over the top or, or won't really fit but in general that's the direction in which you're heading in 6.2 then the second point you have to show convincing individual voice uh, a convincing individual voice or point of view have that established and sustained throughout so for most of your writing you're going to sound assured and you're going to sound like the person you want to sound like OK, you're going to sound like the person you want to sound like. So if you're writing a letter to an MP and you're trying to take something formal with them, then you want to sound like a mature or um, respectable, um, knowledgeable person to actually get their attention. You don't want to sound like a child or you don't want to sound whingy, etc. If you're writing a travel diary of somewhere like... India, for example, then you want to sound like someone who's cultured, someone who actually takes in experiences, someone who's worth listening to. You don't want to sound like a brat. So whatever voice you're doing, but then the other way, if you're trying to sound like if you're writing a short story where you are being a complete petulant child, you have to sound like that petulant child. Now, this individual voice is uh, you, know, you could interpret that a thousand ways. But the idea is basically it doesn't sound like anyone else. So it sounds like you being someone rather than you just copying someone. So this is a big problem with autobiographical work that we used to ask students to do. Um, there'll be a lot of times where they just copy stuff out. Say, say they liked football, then they just go and just copy stuff out of a football um, autobiography and just kind of put that in as, in as if it was their own voice. But you remember with your teachers and the people marking, they generally tend to know the cap your capabilities, and especially your teachers, they'll know when, when you've got that. So your individual voice has to sound like a real person, a real person coming from you, not a person that you're simply copying from somewhere else and with the sustaining it you have to be able to keep that voice up so you need 
to at the if you're being formal or in a certain way at the beginning then you have to keep that going throughout unless again your character is starting to crack and, and you're that complex but i don't think people would be doing that at level six so we wouldn't worry about that but you have to keep that voice up throughout okay 6.3 um level of formality used for purpose and audience are generally appropriate and a range of stylistic devices are used to achieve effect not always successfully okay so in your writing it's clear that you have considered who you are writing to and and why you're writing so sorry that should be whom shouldn't it? whom you're writing to and why so what you're looking for there is the understanding that you are writing to different people in different ways so if i was going to write a friend to a friend i'd write one way to my mother i'd write another way to my boss i'd write another way to uh, my idol my hero i'd write another way etc 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 and notes to myself i'd write another way um so depending on my purpose as well if i wanted to sound like i was going for a job interview then i wanted to sound sorry i was writing a letter for a job then i'd want to sound really confident and capable etc if i was uh, writing a post on a pluralistic a pluralist view blog you know something that kind of takes in all kind of ideas all religions then i might want to sound really encompassing really friendly really relaxed if i was writing something for um a a nutrition center then i might want to sound like i really know what i'm talking about i want to use a lot of facts and scientific evidence etc to try and get across what i'm saying so your purpose and your audience are all like at the forefront of your mind you write to them you don't just write what you want to write you write with them in mind and then you start using stylistic devices quite a lot so in five if we just go back for a second if we just look at what it was in five what we have now is we're getting relevant ideas and material developed okay so once you start to so now that's just in the details that you put now the way that you start putting them that's where you get towards a level six now we're looking really at the stylistic devices now it's anything you can think of uh, your teacher might call them the linguistic devices or literary techniques whatever they are but basically all the stuff that you do like metaphor simile trying to put irony in or trying to put assonance in they all come under different brackets of um stylistic devices you know there's um ones in word ones in language ones in acting ones in sound etc 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 so all those different kinds of stylistic devices sorry when i said um, acting i meant stage directions all those different kinds of stylistic of devices like alliteration simile that being the simplest ones you will start to use them now now the effect that you're always going for is to add like extra meaning and emphasis that's the effect that they're all used for you know to give another layer of some kind now you won't always be successful so for example if you um tried to use a simile and if you said my new phone was as big as a boat that's a bit excessive you know it's it's it just it's just too much so it wouldn't really be successful if however you said um the the spot on my face uh, i felt like the spot on my face looked as big as a tennis ball that kind of is more successful because it's within range you know we just get the idea of that curved round size whereas in if you say my phone was as big as a boat it, you're just like well that doesn't with the shape and the and the link don't really go together because they're just completely different in terms of um um you know the first thing we think about with them you know the first thing we think about boat is obviously the size is, is grand and then with a the phone we think about you know making technology we don't think about it in terms of size but with a spot we may think about the size and with a tennis ball we may think about the size so then it's kind of more accurate you wouldn't really get that sorry sorry the boat um simile wouldn't actually be successful excuse the long-winded explanation there so that's what you're trying to get across in in a lot of your work you're adding the extra meaning and the emphasis through doing that now don't overdo it so even if you're doing it for a level six in in key stage three or if you're going for this which would probably be a dc a gcse then you can't overdo it you know they just use sparingly to have a good effect rather than actually just making people trip over your work as they read it and by trip over your work i mean that you're you'll be using these stylistic devices so much people won't be able to read your actual piece they'll just be 
seeing you try and emphasize things if you imagine it as like um, having like a load of ball balls um, and then sticking them just around the place in your room rather than sticking them to a tree if you've ever seen a Christmas tree decoration and you see ones that are kind of very sophisticated and very elegantly done and they're put properly but then you see some just completely garish ones which just have a thousand different lights and a thousand different ball balls etc etc that's what your work looks like with with too many stylistic devices in it so try and keep your work um, elegantly dressed with stylistic devices as it were